Hey guys, um, as you might be able to tell, I have a haircut and I just came home from it. I thought I'd make a video because as you know, if you've watched my video about my salon phobia or hairdresser phobia, I can't actually remember what I titled that video now, but I'll try and leave a link to it down below, which I will probably forget. But um, it shouldn't be hard to find. <laughs> it's the only one with hairdresser in the title, I think. Yeah, it's been such a long time. I don't think I've had my hair cut for about eight months, um, which is not anywhere near the longest I went without cutting my hair. It's just, oh, it's so terrifying. I'm not going to go into the whole backstory. If you want to know the backstory, you can find out in the video I just mentioned. So I'm not going to go into that whole thing again, because that will just be really long. So I'm just going to talk about today which <laughs> oh god I'm such a I don't know what I am it's like I just decide to do something sometimes and I just go and do it rather than plan it and get really anxious about it like I'll just be I'll moan and moan and moan for months about how I want my hair cut and it's getting too long and you know it's annoying me and it's like getting all shitty at the end and whatever and um, so it's really hard not to just stare at it, <laughs> you know, when you've just had your hair cut and you just can't stop looking at it when you walk past a window. I mean, a mirror <laughs> or a window. Um, yeah, that's what's happening right now. I'm just looking in the camera being all like, did she, did she do it right? Is this really horrible? Oh my God. Totally forgotten what I was saying. <laughs> I was talking about being, I guess spontaneous would be the positive way to say it. Uh, a knee jerk reaction would be the other. <laughs> So today I had already done something anxiety provoking and that was going back to the um, the foot doctor. Why can I not remember what a foot doctor is called? Podiatrist? Is that a children's doctor? That's paediatric. Oh god. Anyway, person who deals with feet. <laughs> I went back because I have to have a uh, special made orthotics. Orthotics? Orthotics? Yeah. I have to have special shoes too, they're horrible. And I hadn't been back for, well it turned out I hadn't been back since August last year and it's now February. And you're supposed to go back three weeks after you get them to see if they're working out and whether they need adjusting. But almost as soon as I got them last year, that was when I got really sick with mono. It took me three months to get over the mono and then I got a secondary infection which took like another two months and it was like Christmas. So. I just kind of never went back and to be honest I was scared like I was having a really bad time around August last year when I got the original orthotics and um, there was definitely a big part of me that was avoiding going back um, after being sick so blah 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 I went back today um, and it went okay I didn't feel too anxious about going on my own um, which surprised me but I guess Maybe going to this new therapy, like going to the group and everything, maybe because I'm getting into the habit of going to those things really regularly, maybe it's making a difference. Like just the actually the act of going and being in a group of people, I don't know. Maybe it's making other things not seem so scary um, sometimes. <laughs> I don't feel like that made any sense. It made sense in my head. That doesn't really help you. Uh, yeah. And then what happened was I was walking out and I went past the hairdressers and I was like, you know what, Jess, <laughs> you could just go in and get your hair cut. You could just go in right now and you wouldn't have to think about it or anything. You could just go in and be like, just cut it, just cut it right now. And um, that's the problem. I get a bit like that. I'm just like, just go do it now because then you haven't got to worry about it. And then you've taken away like a whole thing of anxiety. Woo, you know, I didn't go there because I ended up I always look up reviews of places before I go into them because that's just what I do. So I went on Yelp and it had one star. <laughs> Hairdressers probably aren't the best place to uh, go if it's got a really shit review. <laughs> like there's a lot of things you can go and like you can have a shit, I don't know, manicure or something and it's like okay whatever I can do, do it again. Haircuts, they kind of last a little bit. So I decided to um, go back to the salon I went to last summer, which 
I'm not sure if I ever posted the video. I actually filmed myself going to that hairdresser's and doing an exposure. I don't even know if I posted it or not. I have no bloody memory. If I did, again, I'll leave the link below. If I didn't, it doesn't exist. So, <laughs> so I went back there um, just because I liked the environment a little bit more. It was at street level, so I could see outside. So many things in Toronto are underground, um, like one level under the buildings, and I can't. It makes me really claustrophobic to be under there for a really long time. So. I found a hairdresser that you could see out outdoors and that was good so I went there just on the off chance like I didn't ring up I didn't book and do anything I just got on the bus and just rode the bus all the way up because um, it just actually goes straight up to near the ha hairdresser yeah I just said do you have any walk-ins free and they had one straight away <laughs> so I was just like oh okay fine okay it was okay but I definitely got very anxious I had to practice a lot of skills. <laughs> skills? I am not skillful with my skills. <laughs> I just like do what I've been taught in this new group and hope that it's going to help me through and I guess it does because I'm here and I didn't have a panic attack or anything but it was really hard and I'm guessing the reason it's still so hard is partly because I am not doing it repeatedly like you know with the way exposures work is you do them frequently and as close together as possible but you can't be getting your hair cut every day or every week or every month you know <laughs> so it's it is a really hard one to do um but I was talking to my other half and he was saying you know you should really go like every two months maybe that would help you know because at least it isn't eight months or ten months or however long it is that I haven't had my hair cut. I'm pretty happy with it. It's just, I mean, it's really boring. It's, you know, it's what I asked for. <laughs> I went in with a picture and was like, this kind of thing, just cut off all the dead shit and, you know, just nothing too amazingly fancy. Uh, yeah, so I guess I got what I asked for. It's just it looks super flat. But then my hair is super thin. It's like, if I leave it natural though, it's super curly and I hate it. I absolutely hate my curl. Like it's not a nice curl. It's a hideous, hideous curl. It looks like puppies. It looks like puppy ears flapping away. But the problem is when I straighten it, it just looks super flat. I'm gonna not talk about my hair for a really long time. So the woman who cut my hair, um, she was she was nice. She was very assertive, uh, which can be quite intimidating, but I'm kind of used to that um, with, especially with hairdressers, I find. Um, I don't know if that's just like a personality trait that goes along with it. That that doesn't sound right. That sounds really judgmental. That's not what I mean. I just think maybe I've um, my experiences with hairdressers have just been with that personality type. I don't know. She was okay. She wasn't like overly chatty, which was really good because I don't like to just I don't like to make loads of small talk because. I don't have a lot to say you know they'll ask questions like are you coming home from work what's your job you know why did you move here did you move here for work and all those questions they're not going to be met with a good answer so you know I don't want to like sit there and start getting into my life story and my health problems with a stranger so it can be really awkward and possibly a reason for me to be anxious about going in the first place I think it still just really bothers me that I was so affected by my nightmare trip to the hairdressers all those years ago. I'm. It really bothers me that I'm still struggling with that. Although I might struggle with it anyway because I have anxiety around everything. It's just that I know that the minute I sit in that chair to get my hair washed, you know, everything comes back. I start having to distract myself and do you know what the worst part is you can't look at your phone when you're having your hair cut because they, they're moving your head around they've got scissors <laughs> so you can't you can't be like reading your phone or like looking at apps and stuff because you just can't it's impossible if you do it let me know how you do it because I couldn't I was trying and she just kept moving my head like all different directions and I was like um you know uh, this, this is not working I had to distract myself in my head I guess one of the skills they taught us in the group it might sound strange to you or it might be something you've already heard of 
or it might sound like a game for children. Um, but it is actually very, very useful. And there's there's not like a specific name for it, but I just call it the alphabet game because I think that's what I called it when I was a kid and played it. And I never knew it was like a distraction technique. <laughs> and all you do is you pick a subject like food or film or music, and then you have to think of one thing beginning with each letter of the alphabet to do with that genre. So. I was doing a lot of that in my head. <laughs> I was not sitting there going, apples, bananas, cherries, oh my god. No, it was in my head and I guess it helped a bit. I don't know why I'm acting like happier and more hyper than I feel because I'm actually, I, I, I had a pretty tough time. Um, I guess I'm relieved it's done. And there's a small part of me that does feel a little bit proud I give it a thumbs up. Remember when I used to do that? <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I'm really, really glad that I did do it. I just want it to not be so hard anymore. And I can't think of any way to make it better other than to keep practicing, <laughs> which means I can only practice, you know, every two months and it feels like I'd never get anywhere if I only did something every two months. I guess that's kind of it. Um, bit of a short video really, but it is about a haircut. The one thing I will say is I was inspired by um, something my friend did. A girl I know um, online called Emily. Um, hello if you're watching. I'm not sure if she actually watches my videos or not. She told me that she also has anxiety around driving and obviously living here I don't have a car so I don't have to deal with it. Back in the UK I could barely drive around one block without just oh my god it was awful. She was having a tough time because she'd set herself a goal to drive a certain distance and she'd made it um, about half that distance and then um, switched with her other half and her boyfriend had taken over the driving and she was having a hard time kind of beating herself up a bit about not being able to make it the whole way, not being able to make it the entire distance that she'd kind of set herself in her mind. And I was like, you did so amazing. You know, I was like, oh my God, like I was so, and it sounds strange to say, oh, I'm so proud of you. Like, <laughs> but I do, I do feel proud of my friends when they achieve things in the face of anxiety or fear or whatever it is, you know. Um, I don't think it's strange to feel proud for your friends, is it? So I was kind of inspired by that. I was like, she really pushed through a really big fear, a really triggering event. And I think she did amazing even to do, you know, the distance that she did, regardless of the fact that it wasn't the full distance. Um, just getting in the car in the first place is hard enough. So I guess I had that in my mind and I was like, if she can do that, I can try and go to the hairdresser. <laughs> if I come out with half a haircut, then so be it, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so I didn't and that's good and yeah, so thanks for the inspiration if you ever watched this Emily. I'm going to leave it there for now and say thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye guys.